Meanwhile, Donald Trump joins us every Monday morning. Uh, Donald, over the weekend, it, all eyes on New York City. You know, here in New York City, there have been all these protests over the last uh, couple of months. It was very clear that what happened in New York was a revenge murder because uh, this guy said, they take one of ours, let's take two of theirs, referring to Eric Garner and Michael Brown as well. Uh, you know, a number of police officers say that uh, Al Sharpton, the mayor here, Bill de Blasio, have blood on their hands. What do you say? Well, I live in New York, and I know Al Sharpton very well. I've dealt with him many times over the years, and he is a guy who I don't believe really believes what he's saying. Uh, some people would call him a con man. You look at the Tawana Broly case, which was a disaster and a disgrace, and if it was somebody else other than Sharpton, that would have been, uh, jail time for those people when mm -hmm. they did. And he's gotten away with a lot of murder. He probably makes a decent living. He doesn't pay taxes. If you didn't pay your taxes, you'd be going to jail for a long time. As we do. For some, reason, for some reason, he's out on the streets preaching like, you know, we're supposed to listen. But he hasn't paid taxes, owes millions of dollars. Blood on his I'm hands. Still, I'm still trying to figure anybody else would be in jail, so you're trying to figure that one out. Right. Right, his track record. I, I just can't believe that he, he gets away with this murder because he doesn't believe what he's saying. What do you mean by and, that? How could he not believe it? That's all he ever says. Well, I don't think, I think he's just doing it for himself. But he has a lot of fun doing okay. it. And he, he goes out to rallies and he pretends that he cares deeply. And you wonder what goes on in his mind. But it's a disgrace that, you know, he's, that he's leading a group of people, if sure. he is in fact leading. But what he does is he'll make the speech. It'll be interesting to see what he gets out of all of what he's doing. But certainly in, it must be something because he owes millions of dollars in taxes. Mm -hmm. So Mr. somewhere he's making money and somebody should look into it. One yeah. of the great investigative reporters that we have in New York. Let me ask you this because Al Sharpton is one individual. But when it comes to the mayor in terms of his responsibility in keeping peace and sending the right message. I mean, right now, there are close to 60,000 people with a peti petition, moveon.org, asking for him to resign. Doesn't he have a different level, a higher level of responsibility? And is it not, is it not omission of real leadership that led to these events or the environment, at least, which caused these events and the murders of two innocent police officers? Well, he does, and it's, I've never seen the city like this. It's torn, it's divided, mm -hmm. and in the age of Obama, where all of this stuff should have been perfect and the best ever, it's among the worst I've ever seen, and that's been a long time. I've been watching it for a long time. I've lived in New York for a long time. I've never seen such a race divide as I see right now. Right, so incredible. Al Sharpton yesterday has a press conference. By the way, his first calls were to the Garner family and the Mike Brown family. You think it would be to the, to the, two, the families of the two cops who lost their lives. But here he is yesterday. He's complaining about death threats that he's getting. Actually played a clip. Listen. Last night, I began receiving threatening phone calls. And hey, uh, I'll play one because I'm turning this over to the FBI. The language is, hey, N-word, stop killing innocent people. I'm going to get you. And I have several like this. We are now under intense threat from those that are misguided by those that are trying to blame everyone from civil rights leaders to the mayor. Misguided. He, he's under threat. It's about him. Well, look, he has a way of turning things around, and Al is, and I know him very well, and I've always gotten along with him, to be honest with you, and uh, there are those that say he likes Trump a lot, but I will tell you, Al is a professional con man, and Al can turn things around by doing things like that. That was very smart of him to do. All of a sudden, it's about him, sure. and people aren't blaming him anymore. They're saying, oh, gee, let's feel sorry for Al. Al's a con man. He knows it. I know it. Don King knows it, his friend who I go to fights with, with Al, and they all know it. He is doing his thing, but his thing now is causing a, a lot of problems, and it's problems that are not going to be solved very easily. People are getting killed, and it's got to stop. Well, he, he, how many times have we heard him invoke Martin Luther King Jr.'s name, Alveda King, uh, says she was raised by civil rights leaders. There's a big difference between her and Reverend Al. Listen to this raised by the brother of Martin Luther King Jr. and my mother Naomi and my granddaddy Martin Luther King's dad and so I know very clearly 
if my uncle were here today, I don't have to guess about what he would say or read because he was a Baptist preacher. And I went to church and sat and heard his sermons. I marched and went to jail during that movement. And so there's a, a scripture in Romans chapter 13. It says, people of goodwill don't have to be afraid of the law. And who wants to live in a community or a society without laws and rules? Well, there you go. You know, uh, Donald, earlier you were talking about uh, Al Sharpton and where, wherever he goes, trouble seems to follow. Sure does. You know, when you, when you look back at the Crown Heights riots, uh, one person died there. And back in uh, the 90s, I believe it was, at the Freddie Fashion Mart, you know, he had uh, he had all sorts of protests there. Then some crazy guy went into the store. Seven people wound up dead there. Then on the heels of the uh, Garner and Brown protests where uh, Al Sharpton has said the cops are out of control. Now we have two dead cops. Well, I think Al Sharpton is going to create a tremendous backlash. And that could be a very violent thing and a very bad thing. But I really think that people are on to Al. I think they understand what's going on. And that I think he can create some tremendous backlash yeah. that's going to be a very, very dangerous thing well, for a lot of people. Can de Blasio turn it around? Well, he's going to have to change his attitude. I mean, his attitude right now is incredible. I listened to what Rudy was saying before. It's true about closing streets. And, you know, you see the level of hatred and, uh, you know, kill the cops. Yeah. And these cops are, I mean, tremendous people. I know so sure. many police. These are tremendous people that work hard and they have a very, very dangerous job. Of course, there's always some bad apples, or no matter where you go, no matter what you do. But the cops are tremendous people, the police. And um, you're going to have a backlash if something's yeah. not done about people like Sharpton. The mayor has got to act quickly, or he's going to lose control right. of the city. I wouldn't mind hearing from the president. He spoke after Garner, spoke after Michael Brown. He just gave a call to Brat and went golfing. It would be interesting for him to, to pick up to, to call a presser in, in Hawaii. Donald Trump, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much for joining us on this Monday. And you Monday. too. Thank All you right, very Tom. much. Merry Thank Christmas, you. Mr. Trump.